Is it cheaper to buy a pergola or to build one DIY style? Let's find out. And with summer around the corner, we're going to need some shade. Soon. Oh yeah, here's the space we're going to build it in. But before I go over the cost to buy this pergola or break down the expense to build one DIY style, I wanted to take a beat and discuss something that's been weighing on me heavily. Like an elephant. An elephant on the back. And that's HOAs. Homeowners associations. I mean, do you have one? If so, do you ever feel like your homeowners association is stuck in a time warp? Where covenants are as old as your grandma's recipes and board members treat the neighborhood like it's the wild, wild west? Yeah, me too. Don't get me wrong. HOAs can be good for everyone. Like making sure that our yards are kept up or making sure that your neighbor isn't doing something unsightly and painting his house with pink polka dots. But sometimes, and I mean sometimes, the board members can take their authority a bit too far, leading to frustration and discontent amongst the residents. That's never good. But I should say, I actually like my HOA board members very much, and more importantly, they have my respect. But it's the covenants that I have a problem with, or I should say, the rules. For example, my fence. I recently asked if it was okay to stain or paint my fence on the inside of my yard, and immediately I was stopped with a big fat no. Quickly though, I explained that I wasn't going to stain the outside where everyone could see, but rather just the inside portion. I mean, it is in the privacy of my own yard, and after all, no neighbors would be able to see it from the outside. Oh, and check out this mechanism I'm installing. This is going to be on a rotational arm. You see, it's going to be able to open the louvers on top of this pergola, providing shade or opening it up for sunlight to come through. And it has a bonus of deflecting water as well. Really cool. These are the louvers and this is the arm mechanism. Let's install this. This is going to be pretty cool. This is one of the attributes to this pergola that really had me impressed. But let's get back to my fence. Honestly, this rule doesn't make sense to someone like me. I think, personally, we should be allowed to do whatever we want to do in the inside or privacy of our backyard that no one could see. Now, if I was doing something that was above the fence line, that's different. I should ask for approval. But anything that's non-visible, that should be a yes. But call me old-fashioned, but that's just how I see it. In fact, I really look at it like a two-part question. Does it maintain property values or does it hurt property values? And if it doesn't hurt it, then the answer should always be yes. But of course, most HOAs don't see it that way. They just see the covenants, and that's it. And in my case, our covenants were established in 2006, but our neighborhood was built in 2023. What? That doesn't add up. So I dug a little deeper and did some research. Turns out our covenants were actually just copied and pasted from a generic template established in the late 90s for covenants. So you're telling me we're actually living by rules established in the 90s, although it's 2024? That's wild. That doesn't even make sense. So much has changed. Houses, fence styles, color patterns, technology, you name it. You can't live by rules established in the 90s and it be 2024. You kind of have to update those and move along with the times. Am I right? Oh, and check out that ceiling on this pergola. Look how cool that is. You can already tell how much shade it's creating. And I have the early morning sun, so it's hitting a little different. But it's going to be great. Now I'm attaching that side mechanism to it, and this is what's going to actually mechanically operate these louvers. Pretty cool. And actually really simple to install. But I know what you're thinking. Come on, man, let's talk numbers. We want to know the cost breakdown to buy this pergola or to build one. So let's get into it. Let's talk numbers. When I started looking at companies for a pergola, I didn't want the traditional kind. I wanted really more of a modern approach, one that actually looked like wood, although it wouldn't be, so it'd be easy for maintenance. And this is the company that I found. It's called Mirador. They really had a unique look. They were modern yet traditional. They offered louvers and shutters, and they offered this aluminum that would be maintenance free, but look like wood. If you haven't noticed, it's got like a cherry oak flavor to it. Really cool. Now the size of this thing is 10 by 13. 13 feet wide, 
10 feet deep. And the cost of it is $2,800. Wow, that's not bad, right? Especially to have these louvers and shutters and the ceiling can open and close. And wait till the end. There's more features that are really cool. But I thought that was great. Now, there is an additional cost if you keep adding walls all the way around it like this one. But with the expenses of materials being what they are, to DIY this same project, I looked it up. I really crunched the numbers, and it was going to cost around $4,500. Crazy, right? Well, again, I'm pretty sure inflation had something to do with that and the cost of goods and materials being what they are, but I had estimated it would take me around two and a half weeks to build this DIY style, just as you see it now. So with the cost breakdown, with the materials being $4,500-ish, plus the labor time of two and a half weeks, it just didn't really make sense. This was the much better route. And I know what you're thinking. I'm a DIY guy. I should have DIY'd it. But I'm also a numbers guy. And this time it just made more sense to go this route. And it's got this cool screen attachment. So we can have a wall to help keep out the bugs. Well, in this case, I didn't do it all the way around. So it may not help with the bugs, but it's still cool. And we're starting to set up the furniture and decorate this thing. But we chose the windiest day of the year. We're getting wind gusts up to over 45 miles an hour, and it feels like a miniature tornado coming through. It was so frustrating and so hard to work while doing this with the winds. But we were starting to get this together, one piece at a time. I'm really glad I listened to you on getting a pergola for this deck. I mean, check it out. This thing looks awesome. And originally, I was just going to keep it as a deck. But since you commented that I really needed one for the shade, I dug in and did some research. And in this case... The DIY route wasn't the way to go, but this one was, and the look and the finish, it's just unbeatable. I don't think I could have DIY'd one this cool with these shutter walls or especially this amazing louvered ceiling. That is just too cool. But I wanted to take it a step further and I reached out to this company. Again, they're called Mirador and I asked them if they would offer you a discount and they said yes. So comment below that you want a link and I'll send it to you.